All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. I want to mm -hmm. give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching his word and sincerity in truth. Shalom. <clears throat> all right. Uh, this is my response, you know, to this cat. Uh, this cat, this uh, self-proclaimed elder um, from the Fopi camp. And um, I'm going to get right into it. You know, it's kind of, it's a shame that, you know, you got guys who call themselves leaders of Israel and elders and they speak and splew false doctrines. You know, it's a shame to be, uh, you know, talking about, uh, you know, this hell topic and not speaking the, the proper 100% truth of it. Because uh, when we was in the world and the way that we were raised, you know, was through the philosophies and the ways of the world. And when you learn, when you go to these churches, you believe, you see on the movies and how you taught from Esau, Edom, and your parents that, you know, hell, you know, there's a, you know, you die and, you know, you're going to hell if you're bad and you're down there for eternal and things of that nature. But when you wake up to this truth. All right. They say that's a, you know, also they say it's a devil with a pitchfork, you know, and he, you, you burn in eternal fire. But when you wake up to this truth and the Lord enlighten you, all right, and open your eyes to this truth. One of the first things you do learn besides of learning who you are as a people. All right. What tribe you come from, the true name of the Lord. All right. But you also learn in the very beginning. And have, you know, you get that understanding of what the Bible say about hell. You know, that's the main thing. When you first come in this truth, you're so curious. You want to know everything. And you know, and you're well convinced that the Bible is going to tell it to you. Because one thing that Jake be amazed of is when a brother is uh, going through the scriptures and bringing out the word for each and every subject. Each and every topic, each and every question that's being asked, you know, some Jake look at that and be amazed, but they, they supposed to. All right. Because that's giving glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, proving that the Lord word. All right. Is truth. A lot of people out here, they don't understand that the Bible speaks the truth. You know, because they don't never read it. They don't. They never had someone break the Bible down. And to go into any and every situation that deals with our, our livelihood, even now, it speaks of history, it speaks of prophecy, all right? It speaks of laws and commandments, how you govern yourself. It speaks the truth of how this world work and, how, and who runs it, all right? And who's the Lord people are. So for any, you know, make a long story short, so like you, I don't want to make a rant. I just want to get into the lesson <clears throat> and uh, make these points for the newly fruit that's coming in and watching these videos. Hopeful elect, you know, don't fall for the trap, you know, with Israelites. All right. You got men out here of the circumcision that are speaking false doctrines, because when you wake up, you find out also when you get into the scriptures, which we're going to read. I have a few precepts that Satan works for the most high. All right. The Christians and Christianity, they teach if you die, you know, you're going to go into hell and this and that. And really, that goes back to that Roman Catholic shit. All right. They were scanning Jake, you know, to believe in their Roman Catholic doctrine, this Christianity shit, so that, you know, they can follow them, following the ways of Christianity, you know. But the truth is out, man. And I'm going to tell you straight. The Lord, excuse me, Satan works for the most high. So <clears throat> let me just get into a few scriptures here, which is the main one is Job, the second chapter. All right. The heavenly father have never lost, you know, he's never lost order with his angels, nor his creatures on this earth and every living being. Okay. Every living being, every creature, every angel. Anything, everything that exists 
it obeys under the commandment of the Most High. Okay? It obeys under the word of the Lord. All right? Even with Esau's ruling, it's, it explains why we're in captivity. It explains why we were going to go through much tribulation in hell. It explains our outcome when we're getting out of hell. It explains why Satan, uh, Esau right now is ruling. All right? This whole Bible speaks truth. And, and it's not boasting when we say here at Great Millstone, we have 100% truth. When it comes to the Bible, all right, we have 100% truth. Whatever is not in the scriptures, hey, the Lord is going to reveal it when that time comes. All right? And for the most part, it's a shame. For another thing I want to say, it's a shame being that we're still in quarantine. We still, you know, we're still approaching Jacob's trouble, which is all prophecy. All right. And you got characters like this. Cats like this. That want to talk about a hell doctrine. All right. But we're defenders of the gospel. And the Lord said, reprove them. All right. He said, rebuke them. All right. So it has to be done. But that just shows you, you know, who, what men are the men of the Lord and what men are not. All right. So anyway, you know, oh, also too, the scriptures say you could, you know, you judge a man by his works. All right. And these guys, this guy and his crew, they fell away. They just reappeared, I believe, last year sometime. All right. Where you been? You know? And now all of a sudden they reappeared. He reappeared. And now here we go with this. His vomit. As Apostle called his doctrine. is His vomit doctrine. All right. Anyway. So let's go into it. This is Job chapter 2 and 1. It says, again, there was a day when the sons of the Most High came to present themselves before the Lord Yahweh. And Satan came also among them to present them to present himself before the Lord. All right. Now, I'm just going to say this. I have the NIV up. You know, I kind of like um, seeing what it says, you know, comparing the two. So I'm reading from the KGV, which is on the left side of the screen. So anyway, this is verse two. It says, and the Lord Yahweh said unto Satan, from whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. All right. So when the Lord called the powers to him to himself, Satan came. All right. Because he's an angel that obeys under the laws of the Lord. Obeys, uh, he obeys under the word of the most high. All right. And verse two, it says, and the Lord said unto Satan, from whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. So Satan basically telling the Lord he was what? Roaming through the earth, going back and forth on it he was letting the lord know what he was doing all right now verse three and the lord yahweh said unto satan has thou considered my servant job that there is none like him in the earth a, a perfect and upright man one that feareth the most high and extrueth evil and still he holdeth fast his integrity although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause so basically this was the most high challenging Satan to a, a, a test, you know, putting Satan to the test, seeing what Satan could do with his man's Job, because he said Job was an upright man. All right. One that extrueth evil, you know, he had Job was a man that was known for integrity, that he, he had integrity in the Lord, you know. So he put Satan to test. All right. Satan didn't uh, just do what he wanted to do he couldn't do what he wanted to do unless the heavenly father allowed him to do all right satan could have just snatched Job up and did whatever he wanted to but he couldn't and it's and it's going to explain that and show you that satan didn't have he couldn't do anything unless the lord allowed him to do it so it says and still holding fast his integrity although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause now when you read on the niv you know, it could help you with some more understanding. I'm going to read verse 3. It says, And the Lord Yahweh said unto, said unto said to Satan, Excuse me. Have you considered my servant Job? 
There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears Yahweh and shuns evil. And he and he still mount, mountains his integrity. Excuse me, maintains his integrity. So I get and he still maintains his integrity, though you incite me against him to ruin him without any cause. All right. So now King J's version on the left side of the screen, verse four. And Satan answered the Lord and said, skin to skin for skin. Yea, all that a man have will he give for his life. But put forth thou hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. All right. So Satan is saying, look, if you take away all that he have, I guarantee you, Job will curse you to your face. So it was a bet going on. It was a challenge. All right. And who, who orchestrated this challenge first? The Most High. He was testing Satan. It says, but put forth thy hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord Yahweh said unto Satan, behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. So notice the Most High said, okay, well, go ahead, Satan, do so. But don't take his life. All right. Don't put it to the point where, you know, Job can't can't live because it's really the most high that belongs to the issue of death. So he gave a boundary that Satan couldn't pass when he told him, but save his life, meaning go ahead, fuck him up, take all that he have, you know, test him because that's what Satan does unto us today. He tests us. All right. Especially us who who are. Uh, Know the name of the Lord and believe. I'm going to say the whole four elect. All right. You know, Satan is the adversary. He, he's testing you to see whether you're going to turn against your power. You know, you know, trick you into, into you believing that, um, you know, uh, let's say he's treat like he, he tricks you in a way where he have you going against the word of the Lord. It's the same thing as today, because today the elect is like Job. All right. We're all going to be tested, you know, and, and, and be changed into a low state. But we got to remain with our integrity toward the Lord. And those who endure all the way to the end, as the scriptures say, the same shall be saved. All right. So verse seven. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. So it clearly shows you that the most high in these scriptures here in Job, that he has power over Satan. And he even brought this to Satan and to challenge Satan. All right. When he called the angels amongst him. All right. So now from here, now I had jotted down some precepts. so I don't forget them. Let's go into Isaiah 45 and 7. You know, and these are simple, you know baby scriptures man when you first come in these things you know these scriptures here they stick on you because it gives you that understanding it gives you that understanding in the word and how it works man how the lord move all right and how you know the order of things it gives you the order of things isaiah 45 and 5 now it says i am the lord yahweh and there is none else there is no power no God beside me. All right. So Satan don't sit on any side of the earth being a power in itself. All right. Let me say that Satan is a power of the most high. Let's say Satan is another side of the Lord. It's clear as day, man. All right. Satan is just a part. He's another. He, he's a he's a he's a, a, a spirit and another uh, personality of the heavenly father if that makes sense all right i don't want to say it wrong but satan works for the most high it says i am the lord yahweh and there is none else there is no god beside me i girded i girded thee though thou has not known me meaning there is no other power in the world okay satan there's no power in the dirt in the grave that has his own world and looking to conquer the world as esau would tell you you know if you watch the the National Geographic Channel, the History Channel. Yeah, they're going to spook you out, you know. 
when you go to these churches, they're going to spook you out with these fairy tales, man. All right. And that's not true. That's why the scriptures say, blessed he that readeth. It says, I am the Lord Yahweh, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Verse 6, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west, that there is none beside me. I am the Lord Yahweh, and there is none else. So he made it clear again in the, set, in the sixth verse. All right. I am the Lord Yahweh, and there is none else. Verse 7, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord Yahweh, do all these things. So, <laughs> what more do you want? Who created evil? The Heavenly Father. Who controls evil? The Heavenly Father. All right? When you do wicked wicked in the earth, the Most High send forth evil angels among you. He can send forth his righteous angels among you to, to punish you. But but why will he have but why will he just have to send his righteous angels to destroy to to uh destroy someone in the world that's going that's that's basically wicked? No, he set up his left side, which the left side with the angels on the left side, angels that are um perfect in the work. In which he created him to do. Alright. And we're going to get the scripture after this. Which is 1 Kings man. Clearly showing you that the most high. He has angels that sit on his right. And angels that be on his left. So he have evil angels. That can whip up. And stir up trouble. Alright. So it says verse 7. I formed the light and created. And create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. This is the proper understanding and the truth of who you ignorantly calls God and Jesus Christ. And I'm going to say in this case, this is the Heavenly Father, which also in one accord, his son, Yahweh Shai. All right. Because the Heavenly Father, all right, he created the evil. He, he said, I created darkness. He makes peace and create evil. All right. Esau is ruling because of the Heavenly Father. All right. And it says, he do all, and the Lord, Yahweh, do all these things. So there's nothing that's not done in the earth without the permission and order given by the Heavenly Father. Ooh, matter of fact, in the NIV, uh, this is verse 7. I form the light and create darkness. I bring prosperity and create disasters. I, the Lord, do all these things. So what more do you want, man? All right? <laughs> the most, hey, Satan works for the most high. Don't follow this fool, man. You know, this dude is mad. He's mad, man. You know? So anyway, let's get the scripture. 1 Kings twenty two nineteen. 19. All right? This is uh, 1 Kings 22. And uh, start at 19. It says, and he sat, um, excuse me, and he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord Yahweh. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. You see, so matter of fact, this is Micah I, okay, who Ahab, the king, he he didn't uh like Micah I the prophet because Micah I spoke the truth. You know, he didn't bend. He didn't shuff and jive. He didn't sugarcoat. All right. He didn't lie like the other prophets did. Because uh, Ahab would call the um, prophets that were supposed to be prophets of the Lord. But really they was prophets of lies. And they would just tell the king just to make him feel good and allow him to do whatever it is that he want. They wouldn't tell him anything negative mm -hmm. of anything correction. But Micah, I would. All right. So when you read the story, you understand that. So this is where we at. So verse 19. And he said, hear thou therefore the word of the Lord, Yahweh. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. Now that host is talking about his angels, man. OK, he had angels on the left. He had angels on the right. It was basically when you when you. You know, thinking pictures, it's like a courtroom. 
just like how Esau sets up his courtroom. This is how it was. This was done in the, in the heavens. Not exactly like Esau, but you look, you think of a courtroom fashion. All right. You got the, the, uh, what is it? The plaintiff, you got the, the victim and you got the person who committed the crime. But in this case, the most highest is basically calling a, 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 a council. All right. Because he wants something to be done and we're going to read what he wants to be done. All right. This was a council that the Lord had and he called his angels to him. All right. All the angels, all the hosts. It says uh, verse 20. And the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner and another said on that manner. So the Lord, it seems as though the Lord is is uh, performing something evil here. Right. You know, he's doing something which you would call wicked. Because why? He's plotting against Ahab. He wants Ahab persuaded. You know, and I want to, I hope I'm breaking this down, you know, and edifying uh, those of the hopeful elect that don't have understanding. And I hope you understand, you know. So the Lord here is persuading Ahab and plotting against Ahab. It says, who shall persuade Ahab and he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead. So he wants Rahab to be convinced to go. All right. And, and he wants to destroy Ahab, take Ahab out when he goes to this war in the land of Ramoth Gilead. It says, and one said on this manner and the other said on that manner. So you have angels on the left, you have angels on the right. They were all having a discussion. One probably said this. The other said, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that. And the other said that. The other one said this. All right. Verse 21. And there came forth a spirit. And that lets you know that the host, that council, it was angels. It says, and there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord Yahweh and said, I will persuade Ahab. All right. Verse 22. And the Lord Yahweh said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lion spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. So what do we have here? All right. The most high is using his left side. He's using, you know, the angels that he set up. All right. To, to do evil. All right. The angels he set up to do evil. This is their, this is their, uh, what they say, their best talents. This is what they were created to do. One spirit came forth and said, I will be a lion spirit. What is a lion spirit? That's a demon. That's a demon. This guy right here. He don't realize he has a lion spirit on him. He don't realize the most high send forth a lion spirit on him. Did not the Lord say he, he that put his hand to the plow and looked his back and not fit for the kingdom. How all of a sudden you come back in this thing. You go to Sarnetta to get that, that care package to get that boost, you know, you know, get that starter kit. I should say, get yourself, your face back up there to get your followings. How do you go to Satan to get uplifted? So what you think? He was going to speak of the Lord now? No, he's speaking of Satan, man. He's a lion. It's a lion spirit even on him. You know, and I don't, if brother spiritual, you can actually see in this picture, look at the left side of the screen and look at his eye toward the left. You can see a demon in his face, man. You can see the demons on this guy. He ain't right. You're not right, my man. You're not right, man. All right. And it's bad timing. This is ridiculous, man. Anyway, um, first Kings 22 and 23. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lion spirit in the mouth of all these thou prophets and the Lord Yahweh have spoken evil concerning thee. So what the Lord used, he used the left side. He used the evil. Did not we just read Isaiah 45 and 7? He created darkness. He uh. He uh he created the evil. Okay. So what did the Lord use? He used the evil angels, man, that he set up. That obey that obey under his rule. Okay. All right. All right, now. Satan fucking with me right now. Keep causing distractions to get me messed up, man. 
So I can't bring this out. But Lord's willing. I got two more scriptures, man. Now, matter of fact, let's get this one. Um, Sirach 39 and 27. Let's jump to my Apocrypha. All right, well, yeah, uh, this is Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach in the Apocrypha. All right, the 39th chapter and the 27th verse. It says, all things are are for good to the godly. So the sin, so to the sinners, they are turned into evil. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, uh -oh, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. So what are we reading? All right. It says there be spirits that are created for vengeance. So the Lord also created spirits that are, that are laced so sore strokes upon you, man. The Lord got evil spirits and spirits that can, you know, go forth and be a lying spirit upon a man. All right. The Most High got spirits where he can have them go out and fuck you up. Excuse my French, but they'll fuck you up, man. All right. It says in the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Fire and hell and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. All right. So, I hope, you know, this scripture is edifying because it proves how the most high have spirits created in the earth. All right. Let me read this again one more time. One more time. Right. Isaiah 45 and 7. I get straight to it. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So when it's evil being done, just know that there's evil angels are there. All right. Demons. Uh, uh, any any spirit that is evil is under the commandment of the most high. All right. Get that through your thick skull, my man. You know, Satan works for the most high. This guy, this guy, man, this guy. He's a, he don't know that it's a lying spirit and demon on him. It's crazy, man. I forgot the madness that was spewing out his mouth before, uh, like last year sometime when he came back on the scene, come back out of nowhere. I think he was saying the tribes wasn't the tribes or something like that. Maybe I forgot. But anyway, let's get this last scripture. Um, this is um, Romans 1 and 22. All right. So see. this is Romans chapter 1. And start at 22. It says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. See, this guy thought he was wise. He thought it was a wise move to come back. You know, use Sarnetta as a springboard, you know, get himself back out there. And, you know, he done switched up doctrines. He thought that was wise. He thought he was wise. It says they became fools. Now you just a fool, man. Unless you repent. All right. It says verse 23. And, and I'm going to say this time. They, the doors of repentance is closing, man. All right. The most I could, you know, have these birth pains to the point where the baby is actually coming. You know, and I'm saying that, you know, because the Bible speaks on prophecies compared to birth pains. All right. Meaning that this thing can actually just start rolling in, rolling out. Troops coming in, you know, you could just be snatched up four o'clock in the morning if if the Lord have it, if that's his will. You know, so the doors of repentance is actually closing, man. You know, they're going to force this chip when they declare World War Three is over. We, we we're, we're, we're knocking on the door of the end of Esau's kingdom, man. So anyway, verse 23 and change the glory of the uncorruptible God. Into an image made like to corruptible man, to the birds, to the four footed beasts, and creepy things. So, what he's doing with this false doctrine, all right, and this madness that he's spewing, this guy, all right, the 
proclaimed self-proclaimed elder from Fopi, you know, is basically striving to change, well, the change the glory of of uncorruptible Yahweh into an image made like the corruptible man. You know, to push the 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 doctrine of hell up under the ground, the devil and all this and that, you know, or reincarnation ain't real and this and that. You're trying to take away the Most High's glory. You're changing the glory of the Lord unto corruptible man. The Most High is not corrupt as we are corrupt in this poor flesh. And the only reason why the those of the hopeful elect is in sort of some sort of good standard is because the Most High blew his breath upon them and woke them up to this word. But other than that, physically, all right, we're in sinful flesh. We still go off, not willingly. All right. So it says and change the glory of the uncorruptible power into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and to four footed beasts and creepy things. So you're basically making the Lord as if he's a, you know, a creature on this earth. The most high is above you. OK, the most high is above this world. He's over this world. He governs this world in the palm of his hand. It says, um. Verse 24, wherefore the Most High also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Now, we all know what this is talking about, which is homosexuality. Hey, don't be surprised. You know, I'm not saying he is, but, you know, Most High could put that homosexual spirit on you. He can give you up to your own flesh. All right. Dishonoring your own body. You know, that's how powerful the Lord is. Most High is, 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 is a master. He deserves to be uh, feared, all right? He deserves to be feared, man. You don't know what you're messing with. And then scriptures say, if you offend one of these little ones, it should it, it, it should be that you grab a millstone and, you know, drown yourself in the sea, you know, for just even offending the Lord little ones, man, making the little ones to go off, to believe in your bullshit, man. All right? Verse 25, here's the point. Who changed the truth of God, Yahweh, and uh, into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who was blessed forever? Amen. All right. Because the scriptures say differently than what is coming out of your mouth. OK, so what are you doing? The scriptures say who changed the truth of Yahweh into a lie? You know who? Who doing that? Man is doing that. All right. Two thirds of Jake. You know, you false prophets, men that's uh, supposed to be of this circumcision, woken in this truth, teachers, teaching, you know, you false teachers, wolves in sheep clothing, and ultimately Esau and these other nations, man, and their power structure, man, their ideology, their mannerism and way of life. It says, who changed the truth of Yahweh into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever? Amen. All right. So I hope this response uh, was edifying to those of the whole four elect, you know, and to be careful, man. Pray. That's why the scriptures say to pray always, man, you know, before you be shifted, you know, and shifted in a way where you're outside of this body or stared down in the wrong street. You know, we're in a time where, you know, man, you should be getting more closer to the Lord and repenting. You know, brothers are doing videos and. You know, even if you had any um, beef with a brother, it's a good time to squash it, man. You know, you know, lose the pride or the ego, you know, and, 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 and you know, say, brother, hey, it's all good. You ain't got to be kicking it with each other. But that that uh, apology, if you are, you know, I'm just saying for if, you know, brothers got that type of issue going on. We're, we're in that time of mercy, man. We're seeking mercy right now. And you got men out here still. Headstrong, you know, toad status, stubborn, you know, looking for something. What are you looking for? You know, you ain't looking for the Lord. You're looking for a gathering, looking to be uplifted, looking for to be exhorted. Which one? You know, it's crazy. You know, so with that, I want to give all praise to Yahweh, Vashem, Yahweh, Shai, Vashem, Rakakwadash. want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the Lord's elect. Shalom.